Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you find yourself watching this video. Welcome to Jesus in the Center. My name is Ebony and we are going to continue on with day 44 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. And today we will be reading Deuteronomy chapters 3 through 7. So let's dive into the Word of God. Now we turned and headed for the land of Bashan, where King Og and his entire army attacked us at Edri. But the Lord told me, Do not be afraid of him, for I have given you victory over Og and his entire army, and I will give you all his land. Treat him just as you treated King Sihon of the Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon. So the Lord our God handed King Og and his people over to us, and we killed them all. Not a single person survived. We conquered all sixty of his towns, the entire Argob region in his kingdom of Bashan. Not a single town escaped our conquests. These towns were all fortified with high walls and barred gates. We also took many unwalled villages at the same time. We completely destroyed the kingdom of Bashan, just as we had destroyed King Sihon of Heshbon. We destroyed all the people in every town we conquered, men, women, and children alike. But we kept all the livestock for ourselves and took plunder from all the towns. So we took the land of the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, all the way from the Arnon Gorge to Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is called Sirion by the Sidonians, and the Amorites call it Shinir. We had now conquered all the cities on the plateau and all Gilead and Bashan, as far as the towns of Salika and Edri, which were part of Og's kingdom in Bashan. King Og of Bashan was the last survivor of the giant Rephites. His bed was made of iron and was more than 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. It can still be seen in the Ammonite city of Rabbah. When we took possession of this land, I gave the tribe of Reuben and Gad the territory beyond Arior along the Arnon Gorge, plus half of the hill country of Gilead with its towns. Then I gave the rest of Gilead and all of Bashan, Og's former kingdom, to the half-tribe of Manasseh. This entire Argob region of Bashan used to be known as the land of the Rephites. Jer, a leader from the tribe of Manasseh, conquered the whole Argob region and Bashan, all the way to the border of the Geshurites and, and the Maccathites. Jer renamed this region after himself, calling it the Towns of Jer, as it is still known today. I gave Gilead to the clan of Machir, but I also gave part of Gilead to the tribes of Reuben and Gad. The area I gave them extended from the middle of the Arnon Gorge in the south to the Jabuk River on the Ammonite frontier. They also received the Jordan Valley all the way from the Sea of Galilee down to the Dead Sea. With the Jordan River serving as the western boundary, to the east were the slopes of Fishka. At that time, I gave this command to the tribes that would live east of the Jordan. Although the Lord your God has given you this land as your property, all your fighting men must cross the Jordan ahead of your Israelite relatives, armed and ready to assist them. Your wives, children, and numerous livestock, however, may stay behind in the towns I have given you. When the Lord has given security to the rest of the Israelites, as he has to you, and when they occupy the land your God is giving them across the Jordan River, then you may return here to the land I have given you. At that time, I gave Joshua this charge. You have seen for yourself everything the Lord your God has done to these two kings. He will do the same to all the kingdoms on the west side of the Jordan. Do not be afraid of the nations there, for the Lord your God will fight for you. At that time, I pleaded with the Lord and said, O sovereign Lord, you have only begun to show your greatness and the strength of your hand to me, your servant. Is there any God in heaven or on earth who can perform such great and mighty deeds as you do. Please let me cross the Jordan to see the wonderful land on the other side, the beautiful hill country and the Lebanon mountains. But the Lord was angry with me because of you, and he would not listen to me. That's enough, he declared. Speak of it no more, but go up to Fishgah Peak and look over the land in every direction. Take a good look, but you may not cross the Jordan River. Instead, commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will lead the people across the Jordan. He will give them all the land you now see before you as their possessions. So we stayed in the valley near Beth Peor. Amen. So that's the end of Deuteronomy chapter 3. 
we see the Moses still giving the new generation of Israelites kind of the recap of everything that has happened thus far. So let's read Deuteronomy chapter four. And now Israel, listen carefully to these decrees and regulations that I am about to teach you. Obey them so that you may live, so you may enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors is giving you. Do not add to or subtract from these commands I am giving you. Just obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you. You saw for yourself what the Lord did to you at Baal Peor. There the Lord your God destroyed everyone who had worshipped Baal, the God of Peor. But all of you who were faithful to the Lord your God are still alive today, every one of you. Look, I now teach you these decrees and regulations, just as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Obey them completely, and you will display your wisdom and intelligence among the surrounding nations. When they hear all these decrees, they will exclaim, How wise and prudent are the people of this great nation! For what great nation has a God as near to them as the Lord our God is near to us whenever we call on him? And what great nation has decrees and regulations as righteous and fair as this body of instructions that I am giving you today? But watch out. Be careful never to forget what you yourself have seen. Do not let these memories escape from your mind as long as you live and be sure to pass them on to your children and grandchildren. Never forget the day when you stood before the Lord your God at Mount Sinai, where he told me, summon the people before me and I will personally instruct them. Then they will learn to fear me as long as they live and they will teach their children to fear me also. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while flames from the mountain shot into the sky. The mountain was shrouded in black clouds and deep darkness and the Lord spoke to you from the heart of the fire. You heard the sound of his words, but didn't see his form. There was only a voice. He proclaimed his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to keep, which he wrote on two stone tablets. It was at that time that the Lord commanded me to teach you his decrees and regulations so you would obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. But be very careful. You did not see the Lord's form on the day he spoke to you from the heart of the fire at Mount Sinai. So do not corrupt yourselves by making an idol in any form, whether of a man or a woman, an animal on the ground, a bird in the sky, a small animal that scurries along the ground, or a fish in the deepest sea. And when you look up into the sky and see the sun, moon, and stars, all the forces of heaven, don't be seduced into worshiping them. The Lord your God gave them to all the peoples of the earth. Remember that the Lord rescued you from the iron smelting furnace of Egypt in order to make you his very own people and his special possession, which is what you are today. But the Lord was angry with me because of you. He vowed that I would not cross the Jordan River into the good land that the Lord your God is giving you as your special possession. You will cross the Jordan to occupy the land, but I will not. Instead, I will die here on the east side of the river. So be careful not to break the covenant the Lord your God has made with you. Do not make idols of any shape or form, for the Lord your God has forbidden this. The Lord your God is a devouring fire. He is a jealous God. In the future, when you have children and grandchildren and have lived in the land a long time, do not corrupt yourselves by making idols of any kind. This is evil in the sight of the Lord your God and will arouse his anger. Today I call on heaven and earth as witnesses against you. If you break my covenant, you will quickly disappear from the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. You will live there only a short time. Then you will be utterly destroyed. For the Lord will scatter you among the nations where only a few of you will survive. There in a foreign land, you will worship idols made from wood and stone, gods that neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But from there, you will search again for the Lord your God. And if you search for him with all your heart and soul, you will find him. In the distant future, when you are suffering all these things, you will finally return to the Lord your God and listen to what he tells you. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon you or destroy you or forget the solemn covenant he made with your ancestors. Now search all of history from the time God created people on the earth until now and search from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything as great as this ever been seen or heard before? 
Has any nation ever heard the voice of God speaking from the fire as you did and survived? Has any other God dared to take a nation for himself out of another nation by means of trials, miraculous signs, wonders, war, a strong hand, a powerful arm, and terrifying acts? Yet that is what the Lord your God did for you in Egypt right before your eyes. He showed you these things so you would know that the Lord is God and there is no other. He let you hear his voice from heaven so he could instruct you. He let you see his great fire here on earth so he could speak to you from it. Because he loved your ancestors, he chose to bless their descendants, and he personally brought you out of Egypt with a great display of power. He drove out nations far greater than you so he could bring you in an inn and give you their land as your special possession as it is today. So remember this and keep it firmly in mind. The Lord is God both in heaven and on earth, and there is no other. If you obey all the decrees and commands I am giving you today, all will be well with you and your children. I am giving you these instructions so you will enjoy a long life in the land the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Then Moses set apart three cities of refuge east of the Jordan River. Anyone who killed in another person unintentionally without previous hostility could flee there to live in safety. These were the cities, Bezer on the wilderness plateau for the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth and Gilead for the tribe of Gad, Golan and Bashan for the tribe of Manasseh. This is the body of instruction that Moses presented to the Israelites. These are the laws, decrees, and regulations that Moses gave to the people of Israel when they left Egypt and as they camped in the valley near Beth Peor, east of the Jordan River. This land was formerly occupied by the Amorites under King Sihon, who ruled from Heshbon, but Moses and the Israelites destroyed him and his people when they came up from Egypt. Israel took possession of his land and that of King Og of Bashan, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan. So Israel conquered the entire area from Arior at the edge of the Arnon Gorge all the way to Mount Sirion, also called Mount Hermon. And they conquered the eastern bank of the Jordan River as far south as the Dead Sea, below the slopes of Fishka. All right, so that is the end of Deuteronomy chapter 4. We see Moses reminding um, the new generation of Israelites to make sure that they do not fall into idolatry. Um, they have never seen God, so therefore they don't need to make any idols to worship him. So Moses is giving them that warning again. So let's go on to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Moses called all the people of Israel together and said, Listen carefully, Israel. Hear the decrees and regulations I am giving you today, so you may learn them and obey them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Mount Sinai. The Lord did not make this covenant with our ancestors, but with all of us who are alive today. At the mountain, the Lord spoke to you face to face from the heart of the fire. I stood as an intermediary between you and the Lord, for you were afraid of the fire and did not want to approach the mountain. He spoke to me and I passed his words on to you. This is what he said. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. You have six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your oxen and donkeys and other livestock, and any foreigners living among you. All your male and female servants must rest as you do. Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out with his strong hand and powerful arm. That is why the Lord your God has commanded you to rest on the Sabbath day. 
Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's wife. You must not covet your neighbor's house or land, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. The Lord spoke these words to all of you assembled there at the foot of the mountain. He spoke with a loud voice from the heart of the fire, surrounded by the clouds in deep darkness. This was all he said at that time, and he wrote his words on two stone tablets and gave them to me. But when you heard the voice from the heart of the darkness, while the mountain was blazing with fire, all your tribal leaders and elders came to me. They said, Look, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness. We have heard his voice from the heart of the fire. Today we have seen that God can speak to us humans, and yet we live. But now, why should we risk death again? If the Lord our God speaks to us again, we will certainly die and be consumed by this awesome fire. Can any living thing hear the voice of the living God from the heart of the fire as we did and yet survive? Go yourself and listen to what the Lord our God says. Then come and tell us everything he tells you, and we will listen and obey. The Lord heard the request you made to me, and he said, I have heard what the people said to you, and they are right. Oh, that they would always have hearts like this, that they might fear me and obey all my commands. If they did, they and their descendants will prosper forever. Go and tell them, return to your tents, but you stand here with me so I can give you all my commands, decrees, and regulations. You must teach them to the people so they can obey them in the land I am giving them as their possession. So Moses told the people, You must be careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God, following his instructions in every detail. Stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. Then you will live long and prosperous lives in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Amen. So that is the end of Deuteronomy chapter 5. We see that Moses has gone over the Ten Commandments again with the Israelites. So let's see what he reviews with them in chapter 6. These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy, and you and your children and grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. The Lord your God will soon bring you into the land he swore to give you when he made a vow to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig, and you will eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land, be careful not to forget the Lord, who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and serve him. When you take an oath, you must use only his name. You must not worship any of the gods of neighboring nations, for the Lord your God, who lives among you, is a jealous God. His anger will flare up against you, and he will wipe you from the face of the earth. You must not test the Lord your God as you did when you complained at Massa. You must diligently obey the commands of the Lord your God, all the laws and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so all will go well with you. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors. You will drive out all the enemies living in the land, just as the Lord said you would. In the future, your children will ask you, what is the meaning of these laws, decrees, and regulations that the Lord our God has commanded us to obey? Then you must tell them, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand. The Lord did miraculous signs and wonders before our 
our eyes, dealing terrifying blows against Egypt and Pharaoh and all his people. He brought us out of Egypt so he could give us this land he had sworn to give our ancestors. And the Lord our God commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear him so he can continue to bless us and preserve our lives as he has done to this day. For we will be counted as righteous when we obey all the commands the Lord our God has given us. Amen. So that is the end of Deuteronomy chapter 6. So let's see what's in Deuteronomy chapter 7. When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are about to enter and occupy, he will clear away many nations ahead of you. The Hittites, Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. These seven nations are greater and more numerous than you. When the Lord your God hands these nations over to you and you conquer them, you must completely destroy them. Make no treaties with them and show them no mercy. You must not intermarry with them. Do not let your daughters and sons marry their sons and daughters, for they will lead your children away from me to worship other gods. Then the anger of the Lord will burn against you, and he will quickly destroy you. This is what you must do. You must break down their pagan altars and shatter their sacred pillars. Cut down their astral poles and burn their idols, for you are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God. Of all the people on earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be his own special treasure. The Lord did not set his heart on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other nations, for you were the smallest of all nations. Rather, it was simply that the Lord loves you and he was keeping the oath he had sworn to your ancestors. That is why the Lord rescued you with such a strong hand from your slavery and from the oppressive hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. But he does not hesitate to punish and destroy those who reject him. Therefore, you must obey all these commands, decrees, and regulations I am giving you today. If you listen to these regulations and faithfully obey them, the Lord your God will keep his covenant of unfailing love with you as he promised with an oath to your ancestors. He will love you and bless you and he will give you many children. He will give fertility to your land and your animals. When you arrive in the land he swore to give your ancestors, you will have large harvests of grain, new wine and olive oil and great herds of cattle, sheep and goats. You will be blessed above all nations of the earth None of your men or women will be childless, and all your livestock will bear young, and the Lord will protect you from all sickness. He will not let you suffer from the terrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them all on your enemies. You must destroy all the nations the Lord your God hands over to you. Show them no mercy and do not worship their gods, or they will trap you. Perhaps you will think to yourselves, how can we ever conquer these nations that are so much more powerful than we are? But do not be afraid of them. Just remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all the land of Egypt. Remember the great terrors the Lord your God sent against them. You saw it all with your own eyes. And remember the miraculous signs and wonders and the strong hand and powerful arm with which he brought you out of Egypt. The Lord your God will use this same power against all the people you fear. And then the Lord your God will send terror to drive out the few survivors still hiding from you. No. Do not be afraid of those nations, for the Lord your God is among you, and he is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will drive those nations out ahead of you, little by little. You will not clear them all away at once, otherwise the wild animals would multiply too quickly for you. But the Lord your God will hand them over to you. He will throw them into complete confusion until they are destroyed. He will put their kings in your power, and you will erase their names from the face of the earth. No one will be able to stand against you, and you will destroy them all. You must burn their idols in fire, and you must not covet the silver or gold that covers them. You must not take it, or it will become a trap to you, for it is detestable to the Lord your God. Do not bring any detestable objects into your home, for then you will be destroyed, just like them. You must utterly detest such things, for they are set apart for destruction." Amen. So that is the end of Deuteronomy chapter 7. We see Moses once again reminding the, the children of Israel to obey the Lord's laws and decrees. And he tells them about how God is going to bless them when they go into the land if they follow his um 
his rules and regulations that he has laid out for them and to make sure that they dis completely destroy the idols that the people of the nations that they are going in to displace um, worship so that they won't become a trap to them. But all right, that is the end of day 44 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. I pray that you enjoyed this reading. Um, if you would like to download the reflection questions, they will be linked in the description of the video. You can download those. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed so that you can get the notifications for day 45 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. All right, bye.